Hey guys, so I'm in my serious topics background here on my couch. So I was actually getting ready to go to bed, watching through my watch laters for my YouTube videos or some things some people had posted on the AuthorTube Facebook page that I'm part of, even though I just kind of lurk there. I read everything, I just don't always respond. I'm sorry if any of you happen to also be author tubers. I don't seem like I'm very active there, but I am watching, and then if I have something to say, I say it. All that aside, I was watching through some videos, and this kind of got brought to my attention. I'm gonna go ahead and link the videos that I watched that kind of brought this up. Uh, the one that I watched first was the Courtney Project. She really brought up the first subject I'm going to go over, but she was referencing Haley Bascom's video, which I thought was a great video just in terms of writing resources, in terms of like protecting new writers, protecting the community. Definitely go check out both those videos and they will be linked. Oh, my nose itches. I made myself a whole bunch of notes. So I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to talk about some other things I've been thinking about recently. And if all of this still feels true in the morning, then I'm gonna post it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say everything tonight before bed, edit it when I wake up, because it's gonna be my bedtime and I'm elderly. So some of you have seen some of these videos already discussing kind of the ethicalness of ARC reviews. I don't think this is the first time it's being used. Both of the channels that I just mentioned mention what happened and since they really go into it, I'll let you go to their channel. But basically it's ARC reviews being used as a gimmick for marketing. If you don't already know, ARC reviews are advanced reader copies of books. You send them out ahead of time hoping for free marketing. You're hoping that the people you send them to will love them and just praise your name and praise the book across creation and let other people know about it and give other people an advanced opinion about the book. It's free marketing. It's a method for you to start selling your book before it's even out. So advanced reader copies are free, straight up across the board, they're free. And recently it's come to the attention of the community that people are using things like Patreon to essentially sell their ARC reviews. Now, this is a thing that does happen in big book sales, um, in the traditional publishing. People do get ARC review copies and they'll try and sell them. They'll try and sell them before the book comes out, which is completely unethical. It's not okay in any way. Sometimes you even find ARC copies in secondhand bookstores and it's really, it's not okay in any way. If you got an ARC copy, that was really a goodwill between you and the author that you were going to read the book and assumedly review it unless you had nothing nice to say about it and then you were going to maybe pass it along to a friend at the very most. You were definitely not going to make money off of it. You're not meant to make money off ARCs. Nobody is meant to make money off ARCs. But some people are trying to sell them essentially using Patreon and saying that if you're in a certain tier, a very high tier, then you could get an ARC copy. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and say, there is nothing wrong with marketing yourself. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of hustle. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make a dollar for yourself. It's important, <laughs> that, especially among authors, especially among self-published authors, it's really hard to make money. And I understand the drive. I understand wanting to make money on your craft. Like that's not wrong in its essence. It's not bad to want to make a living doing what you love. What is wrong is doing it at someone else's expense, doing it in a way that's completely unethical, doing it in a way that people who know better know not to fall for. You're essentially tricking people who don't know better. And in the case of people doing this with YouTube and with Patreon, a lot of times that's young, inexperienced viewers, young and experienced writers, those are your future peers, who don't know any better, who are getting tricked into this. And I want to bring this up because I've talked about my first publishing experience with poetry before and I fell victim to a vanity press, essentially, that sort of tricked me into believing it wasn't a vanity press. Poetry is a complex community. It's very hard to get published. 
it's a very tricky community. There's a lot of asking for money. There's a lot of money flowing towards literary journals and not towards authors. And I have talked about this ad nauseum because it really bothers me. And it bothers me because it's easy to get tricked, but it's the same kind of thing. You're making money off of somebody else, making money at their expense because they don't know any better. And that's just not okay. Asking someone to join your Patreon, which is them supporting you and loving you, and then saying that you're only gonna give them an arc if they have paid a certain amount of money to you, that's completely wrong. And you know that's wrong because arcs are free. Sorry, my camera died there, so I went ahead and brushed my teeth and all that. Now I'm back. I'm gonna talk about the second part of my, hopefully I wrapped up everything on the arc reviews and being predatory towards people who are trying to wish you goodwill people who are just doing their best and trying to make it the same as you in this industry. So anyway, the other thing I want to talk about is the algorithm. I feel like it has become such a presence. I heard a commercial on the radio today driving home from work where they used the term the algorithm as though it was like the man or the thing watching down on us. And I was just like, I feel like we put too much weight onto the algorithm so we talk about it all the time like an algorithm is a tool an algorithm is a mathematical equation that guesses that's its job its job is to guess its job is to take what it thinks you might be interested in and try and find the biggest correlation between what you're interested in and things that are going to make its creator or its employer however you want to think about it money that's what its goal is. And so the people who made it initially put in some guesses initially, and it took those guesses and watched for patterns that either fit or didn't fit and continued guessing. That's the algorithm. It's not this big, scary, like overlord program. It's a guessing tool. And now my memory card ran out. This is what happens when I do an impromptu video. My camera is not prepared for it. Anyway, as I was saying about algorithms. So it used to be when something got viral. It got viral entirely through sharing. Somebody shared it with a friend, they shared it with a friend, suddenly it had millions of views. You know, or back in the day, viral was even thousands of views because that was something that had never happened before. Nowadays, people pay for the top spot. The algorithm puts someone on the trending page when they've paid for it, let's be honest, when was the last time you saw something that was going actually viral on the trending page? Cause the whole drama going on between James Charles and Tati never made it on the trending page. So keep that in mind. There's gotta be overlap between AuthorTube and the beauty community, right? Like y'all gotta be as nosy as me at least, even if you're not into like makeup and everything. So going viral isn't the same. There just isn't the same thing anymore. And if you maybe are younger and you weren't around when things really went viral, when like literally everyone is seeing the same thing, where on the news we're talking about the same video for like weeks, for like a month, everyone is still sharing it. But the thing about going viral that way versus getting like 10 million views on a video now is that those views come with some kind of money. Back in the day, it was all people. And the thing is, things still go a little bit viral now. And it isn't to quite the same extent because they do try and stomp it down. Because again, the algorithm is trying to find the overlap for where your interests make money. And if that's not in the overlap, then even if you find this thing through someone else, then the algorithm doesn't know what to do with it. And it's like, hey, but look at these other videos that are similar to that, that are gonna make me money. But here's the thing. The algorithm is just numbers. It's just a formula. People create the algorithm. What I'm saying is we can overcome the algorithm together. Like we aren't under some overlord who has taken over the internet and now everything is algorithm. We can actually impact how the algorithm works. We can impact how things are shared. 
And that's through sharing. That's through directly me sending you a video through our Skype or talking to you about a video. This is the same thing. I know the AuthorTube community talks a lot about like you've got to review each other's books, you got to talk about each other's books, like build hype for each other. You can do that with anything. You can be like, this tweet was sick. That's why some of them end up on Tumblr. I mean, Tumblr may be a trash platform, but they are pretty good at avoiding the algorithm because they're such a trash platform. You can share videos, and you can share them at a rate that is very similar to when they were going viral before, and in the same manner where I'm sharing with you, you're sharing with a friend, because if, qual if content is quality or content is entertaining, it's going to get shared. People are going to enjoy it. And I feel like there's a lot less sharing directly nowadays, a lot less of sending your friend your favorite videos, because you assume everybody is going to find content, and everyone has so much content to watch. Like. My watch later never has fewer than 20 videos in it. Recently, I've been stuck around 100 a lot <laughs> trying to watch through. Everyone has tons of content. But we can also prioritize things that are recommended by people that we trust. And another way to affect the algorithm, other than sharing and clicking and liking and, you know, really commenting and trying to bolster those people that you think actually have quality content, the other thing you can do is unsubscribe and not click and not participate in things that you don't want to be a part of, not encourage people that you don't want to encourage, not keep watching dramas and unfolds. If you really fundamentally don't think that someone is worthy of your time, not watching just because you're nosy, not watching just because everyone seems to be talking about this thing. If you fundamentally don't think this person is worthy of your time. If we can make a huge impact as a community, and it's shown time and time again when people actually mobilize, actually do unsubscribe, actually do subscribe to something, things take off, things fall to the dust all the time. We have that power. We may feel really powerless, but actually we have a ton of power. And there are people out there telling us we're powerless. There are people out there telling us we have no control over the algorithm. They have no control over the algorithm. The algorithm just does what the algorithm does, like it's some kind of overlord. But it's not. It's learning from us. And we have to teach it how to treat us. This is like being in a relationship. You gotta teach somebody how to treat you, because otherwise they're gonna walk all over you. It's what the big wigs who are running the internet big companies, like Twitter, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube especially, they're telling us they have no power and that we have no power then by proxy, but we have all the power. Uh, and this is the same thing as like with government. The people do have the power and them telling us again and again that they, we don't, taking away more and more of our resources and making us feel like we don't is their way of keeping the power. But if they're not serving the people, then what's the point of them having the power? Maybe this is getting a little too political. I was all up in a rage in my head. Thing is, YouTube won't suggest videos that nobody is clicking on. Anyway, I feel like this has gone on long enough. I need to get to bed. The message I want to leave you guys with, I kind of jotted down, so I'm going to be looking down to read it. I know I've been looking down a lot because I've got all my notes here. In the communities that we have on the internet, the things we really need to focus on is we really need to be kind and we need to be mindful because even when you benefit, other people are involved and you may not think that you're hurting them or you may not care, but you are and you should. You need to show respect to the other humans that you interact with because we're all humans on the internet and it may be kind of fun to like stir the pot, rile things up, it may be kind of fun to make a buck for yourself at someone else's expense. It may feel good when you look at your wallet, but the fact is we're not gonna get very far in life hurting each other. And you can do a lot of good by just being kind and respectful and being mindful. And until everyone else is able to get on that level, watch yourself, be careful, do your research, be really sure of what you're doing. Don't just jump into things, especially where money's involved. Really be sure before you jump on a bandwagon, especially for someone who maybe isn't worth it. And especially for someone who doesn't have credentials, who is telling you things that maybe sound good on the surface, but there's nothing to back them up. Just be really cautious. There are people out there who aren't good, but there are a lot of people who are, 
and if more of us can just be kind and respect each other and acknowledge that we're human beings and start blocking and unsubscribing and kicking the people who really are just toxic out of the communities and off of the internet so that this is a space for people who are kind and productive and working together, which is something humans do great, I think it'll be a better place. So that's my piece on that. Just hope you'll watch the other videos about what's going on in the AuthorTube community and I hope that you'll be really cautious about watching yourself. I also have a post that's going crazy on Tumblr still that's just about being careful when you're getting published. I'll link that one down below too because it's pretty helpful and a lot of people have also added on comments and more and more things so it's become pretty educational for you so that's down below and yeah I just hope you kind of take some of this to heart if you've gotten this far and this close-up of my face. I just think we all need some luck, so good luck to all of us. And we all need to be kinder and more respectful and listen more and not make everything about the bottom line and the hustle because in the end it's not. You need money, but there are millions of ways to make it and you don't have to hurt somebody else directly in order to do it. So... Yeah, that's all. Good night.